We'll now begin a questioning. Uh, I want to start out just to clear up one thing by just asking all of our witnesses a yes, no question. Uh, based on what we know now, including the recent Department of Justice indictment, do you agree that there is now clear evidence that supports the conclusion that the January 6th insurrection was planned and it was a coordinated attack on the U.S. Capitol? Just say, everyone agree? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, would you agree that this attack involved white supremacists and extremist groups? Yes. yes. Okay. Would you agree that this was a highly dangerous situation, which was horrific, uh, but could have actually been worse without the courage of the officers yes. that you commanded? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. So now let's look at what we knew leading up to it, or what you knew leading up to it, or what people that worked for you knew leading up to it. Uh, we knew leading up to it that on January. Uh, leading up to January 6th, so President Trump sent nationwide tweets telling people to come to Washington on January 6th and saying, be there, will be wild. And according to public reporting by the Washington Post, the FBI's Norfolk field office issued a threat report on January 5th that detailed specific calls for violence online in connection with January 6th, including that protesters quote, be ready to fight, end quote, end quote, go there ready for war, end quote. Um, I guess I'll start with you, Mr. Sun. When a critical intelligence report is received by the Capitol Police uh, from an intelligence community source like the FBI, um, who usually would receive it? And I guess I'll start with, did you receive this report? Thank you very much for the question, ma'am. Uh, I actually, just in the last 24 hours, uh, was uh, informed by the department that they actually had received that report. It was re received by what we call a, it's a, uh, one of our sworn members that's assigned to the Joint Terrorism Task Force, which is a task force with the FBI. Uh, they received it the evening of the 5th, uh, reviewed it, and then forwarded it over to an official at the intelligence uh, division over at uh, U.S. Capitol Police Headquarters. It's and so you opinion. hadn't seen it yourself? No, ma'am. It did not go any further than that. Okay. And then was it sent to the House and Senate Sergeant at Arms? I don't believe it went any farther than uh, from the SART over to the Sergeant at the Intelligence Division. Okay. And Mr. Irving, Mr. Stanger, do you, did you get that report? Beforehand, Mr. Stanger, did you get the report? No. Okay. No. Mr. Irving. I, I did not. Okay. Um, Okay, so I think that may have contributed part to the lack of information, but I'll leave that um, for, for the future. Now let's go back to another report. The, I know on January 3rd, uh, Mr. Sun, you said in your written testimony that the Capitol Police published intelligence assessments of the event, including one on January 3rd. Um, do you mostly rely on your federal partners like the FBI to gather and analyze intelligence on potential threats to the Capitol and members of Congress? Yes, I think what's important to realize as a law enforcement agency, we're, we're a consumer of intelligence and information that's provided by the intelligence community. Uh, the intelligence community is 18 federal agencies that uh, collect information, uh, do the analyzing of the raw data, raw intelligence, and then provide it to us. So we're reliant on that information to be complete and accurate. But in that, in that report, we now know, according to your testimony, that tens of thousands of participants were likely to send on Washington. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the January 3rd memo, according to the Washington Post, made clear that supporters of President Trump see January 6th as the last opportunity to overturn the results of the presidential election, and that, quote, this sense of desperation and disappointment may lead to more of an incentive to become violent. Is that correct? Yes, it is, ma'am. Um, the article also quoted the memo as stating that unlike previous post-election protests, the targets of the pro-Trump supporters are not necessarily the counter-protesters, but rather Congress itself is a target on the 6th. Is that right? That is correct. And did you have any indication that many of these protesters might arrive armed or that members of extremist groups might be there? We knew that members of extremist groups would be there and there was uh, social media calls for people to come armed. Yes. You've also said that at a January 
fifth meeting with Capitol Police, the Sergeant at Arms and federal law enforcement, military officials, all present at the meeting indicated that there was no new intelligence report for January 6th. Is that right? That is correct, ma'am. But your testimony states that the Capitol Police took a number of steps after these assessments, like um, what, what you said was the largest number of civil disturbance unit platoons possible, increasing dignitary protection coverage, coordinating with the DC police and ordering all hands on deck status for Capitol Police. Is that right? That, that is correct, ma'am. We took extensive uh, efforts to prepare for the events based on the information, much of which you just reviewed, yes. Okay, good. So if the information was enough to get you to do that, uh, why didn't we take some additional steps? Why didn't you and others involved to be better uh, prepared to confront the violence? We, we expanded our perimeter. Uh, when we expanded the perimeter, uh, again, we knew there was going to be some uh, maybe limited uh, uh, violence, but we did. We expanded the perimeter. We took a number of steps to outfit our personnel with uh, additional uh, hard gear. We developed a plan for if we had um, uh, protesters that may be armed. Uh, and that was one of the reasons the expanded perimeter and the uh, heightened risk that I went to the Sergeant Arms and requested the, the National Guard. And, but now you realize it wasn't enough, those security measures, is that right? Well, that, that is, you know, hindsight being what it is, I mean, you, you look around the Capitol right now and you see the resources that are brought to bear based on the information we now know from January 6th. Okay. Um, Mr. Sun, you stated in your written testimony that you first made a request for the Capitol Police Board to declare an emergency and authorize National Guard support on Monday, January 4th, and that request was not granted. That is correct, ma'am. Your testimony makes clear that the current structure of the Capitol Police Board resulted in delays in bringing in assistance from the National Guard. Would you agree with that? That's yes. one of the things we want to look at. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, do you think that changes are needed to make clear that the Capitol Police Chief has the authority to call in the National Guard? I, I certainly do. I think in an exigent circumstances, there needs to be a streamlined process for the Capitol Chief, uh, Chief of Police, for the Capitol Police to have authority Okay, and Mr. Stanger, do you think that reforms are needed to the structure of the Capitol Police uh, Board to make that clear? I think uh, a review of the Capitol Police Board and their statutory authority is probably a, a, would be a good time to do this now. Uh, there's, there's a lot of statutes out there in the Capitol Police Board that go back many, many years. Uh, things have changed, and it's probably uh, to make uh, the board a little bit more nimble, it's probably not a bad time and an idea to take a look at what's there. Uh, it's probably an understatement with what happened, but thank you. Uh, Mr. Irving, your views? I would certainly agree with both Chief Sund and Michael Stanger. I think a review would certainly be warranted at this time of, of the Capitol Police Board. Um, Mr. Sund, your written testimony states that you had no, no authority to request the assistance of the National Guard without an emergency declaration of the Capitol Police Board. Okay. On what rule, regulation, or authority did you base that view? Uh, I'd have to go back and look the specific rule, but it's a standard, it's a standing rule that we have. Um, I cannot request the National Guard without a declaration of emergency from the Capitol Police Board. Uh, it's it, it's kind of interesting because it's very similar to the fact, you know, I can't even give my men and women cold water on an excessively hot day without a declaration of emergency. It's okay. just a process that's in place. Um, and to be clear, apart from the Capitol Police Board, you also face delays in getting authorization to bring in the National Guard from the Department of Defense. Is that correct? We'll be that, hearing from them next week. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Um, would you agree that there were serious issues at the Pentagon that contributed um, to the fact that guard troops did not arrive at the Capitol until about 5.40 that day after most of the violence had subsided? I, I don't know what issues there were at the, the Pentagon, but I was certainly surprised at the delays I was, I was hearing and I was seeing. Okay, very good. And my last question, just as of all of you, in addition to the reforms of the police board, uh, which are very clear need to be made, any other suggestions that wouldn't involve classified information you have for us, uh, Mr. Sund? As reference to uh, some of the recommendations, mm -hmm. I would look at, you know, again, you know, one of the big things that I think was a contributing factor to this was uh, intelligence. I think as you meet with the intelligence community and law enforcement in the intelligence community, we have a very good relationship. 
I think the aperture just needs to be opened up a little bit farther. You know, like um, Chief Conti had mentioned, you know, January 6th was a new day. It was a change of what threat we face. And I think getting them to open the aperture and looking a little bit harder. And I think internally looking at some of our policies, procedures, our processes for how we handle special events, how we handle incident command uh, with stuff we can do. And then looking at physical security of the building uh, and the grounds, I think is gonna, be, is gonna be critical. I know a lot of people have talked about you know, the fencing, the open uh, environment. I understand and I know that goes way back and uh, members of Congress like the open environment. I think there are ways uh, to develop a more secure campus while keeping an open environment, but I'll leave that for more classified or restricted uh, hearings. Okay, thank you. Anything you would add in addition, just any other thing you'd add in addition to uh, what uh, the former police chief laid out here, Mr. Singer? I would be very supportive of that, those areas that uh, the chief mentioned. I think he's right on the money there. It's, I think there's maybe another area of uh, use of force uh, that probably needs to be uh, coordinated uh, better in, in, the, this, in the region here. Uh, but certainly intelligence uh, needs to be taken a look at as to uh, how okay. it works. We have a lot of people that we ramped up since 9-11. Uh, and I think uh, maybe it's time to take a look at how uh, how efficient it is on the, the gathering of intelligence and the collection of intelligence. Okay. And, uh, Thank you. I'm going to allow my colleagues to ask that same question of um, you, Mr. Irving, and you, uh, Chief Conte, because I've gone over my time. Thank you.